Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing more of the excavation of Hull's Barrow. And things are things are starting to hot up now. We've got permission to go and excavate. We're going to go into town and recruit a couple of labourers, perhaps, to sort of help us dig. And we've got a got a cat to possibly shave as well, if we can find him. Um, to re not not just for fun, partly for fun, but partly also to repair the strange silent girl's violin bow. Oh, here we are at Mar up market. Hello, Miss Tompkins. Hello. We weren't introduced earlier. My name is Thomasina. Ma'am. How do you fare, Miss Tompkins? I'm waiting for Mr. Ambrose. Have you seen him? Who's that? The milkman. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. You are in the employ of Lord Panswick? Aye. He employs half a bullion one way or another. I'm in need of some help for my excavation. Do you think his lordship could lend me some of his labourers? Maybe. Might you introduce me to him? Sorry, ma'am, but his lordship doesn't take visitors. Any road, I must wait here for Mr. Ambrose. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. If Mr. Ambrose doesn't turn up and I find you some milk, would you be able to introduce me to Lord Panswick? Hmm. His lordship really doesn't like visitors, ma'am. I'll take the risk. Miss Fenchurch will be cross with me. But she'll be even crosser if I come back without fresh milk. So do we have a deal? Aye. Bring me some milk and I'll take you to his lordship. Thank you. But hopefully Mr. Ambrose will arrive soon. Maybe we can milk that cat as well. I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk. Thank you, ma'am. But tell me if you see Mr. Ambrose, won't you? Well, the I name know. Herbert does suggest he's unmilkable. We'll see. Can I interest you in a pie? <laughs> I don't know, there's actually the goat. I'm thinking more of the goat. Top we might be able to go and milk. No, thank you. You're missing out. All right, who's this gentleman? Good day. Freshly picked apples, miss. Would you like to try one on the house like? Yeah, why not? Yes, please. As far as I know, she hasn't eaten in three days. The apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. Mutton pies! The apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. Ew. Who's this guy? Don't know. Good day. Fresh produce! Do you have any milk for sale? Not today, sorry. What have you got for sale? I'm selling meat, vegetables, and all sorts of herbs and things. You're welcome to have a gander. I'll be sure to browse. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. Various chards and beets. She is selling various herbs, some familiar looking, some not. Tins of corned beef. Ghastly. <laughs> I'm with her there. The box is full of various sprouts and onions. Nothing particularly tempting. Alright, we'll leave that. Um, let's go to the pub. Joe, oh, perhaps you've had enough sugar? Don't you start to know. Hello. Hello. Oh, aye, she's back again. Can't a man drink his tea in peace? There's no for you here, lass. Horrible man. How many more sugar cubes is he going to add to his tea? He'll have no teeth left by the end of the day. You probably heard that. Who's this guy? Hello there. Yes. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ted. Ted Cross. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Are you a local, Mr. Cross? Oh, no. I'm just passing through. I'm a musician. Just myself, me guitar and me horse. Are you a travelling musician? Aye. I've been playing a new song tonight. I've just finished the lyrics. What's it about? You'll have to come listen. What do you make of Bewley? Can't say that I know much about this place. I don't usually travel this far south. I see. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have, miss. What is it? Never mind. 
Thank you for your time. Make sure you watch my performance later, won't you? I'll try. Well, Cyril's not here. I have a chat to Stan. Found old Leonard, I see. Yes, finally. I've had some rather unbelievable news, Stanley. Oh? Remarkable. Quite the coincidence, is it not? Remarkable. Just remarkable. Do you recall my father from back then? I'm afraid not. Those were my droving days, you see. I didn't spend much time in Bewley, but an interesting turn of events nonetheless. What do you know of Mother Mildred? <clears throat> I'll tell you what I know about Mother Mildred. She wants locking up. How so? She owes me a small fortune on her tab from years ago. Do remind her next time you see her, won't you? I'd rather not get involved, if you don't mind. Be careful who you trust, Miss Bateman. Who is Miss Tompkins? A housemaid in the employ of Panswick Manor. She comes by to pick up his lordship's weekly paper. I'm surprised newspapers are available in Bewley. Aye, his lordship gets what he wants. Lord Panswick likes to keep up with affairs from outside of Bewley. Aye, he has many interests around the country. What sort of interests? His lordship's affairs are his own business. Do you have any fresh milk going spare? Sorry, lass. I've none at all. Never mind. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? No, I can't say it does. Hmm. Goodbye. See you soon. Right, well, let's go up to uh, Bridley's... Is it Bridley? Bryden's farm. Why do I keep saying Bridley? Um, I'll pop, pop, pop by this way, maybe. No, there's still nothing there. There we go, past the church, don't we? What was that hotspot? Oh, just plaques. Okay, that's fine. Here we are. Maybe we should knock first and just ask if we can milk his goat. What do you want? Do you have any fresh milk going spare? If you can get any milk out of old Eunice, you're welcome to it. Eunice? Me goat. Good luck. Right, okay, well that's permission, I think. Let's take the bucket. Hmm. I think this goat needs to be pacified. Can we give her the rotten apple? Hey girl, would you like an apple? <laughs> the grumpy thing isn't interested. Oh. I don't think I've got anything else, have I? Well, let's just try it with the bucket, I suppose. Alright, we're doing this. No. Oh. Well, that was I, interesting. I... I'm not sure what that was. I don't know what's happening to me. All this superstitious nonsense must be getting to my head. <laughs> so we're not going to milk the goat, is that it? I'm not going near that thing again. Right. Really? What a wild looking thing. I'm not going near that thing again. Right, well I guess that's not where we're gonna get some milk from. So it's up to it's up to Herbert now. I should ask Mr. Bryden if he could milk the goat for me. Hmm. Okay. Oh we could do that. <laughs> well, 
Well, did you get any milk out of her? I tried, and failed miserably. <laughs> uh, she's a temperamental beast. Perhaps you could milk her for me? I'd like to help you, lass, but I've just had a flare-up in me joints. I worked myself too hard this morning. I couldn't bend down to save myself. Is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> my wife would say I'm beyond any help, I'm certain of that. But if you know of any remedies for aching joints, please send them my way. I'll see what I can do, Mr. Bryden. I'm going to rest for a while. Ta-ra now. Okay, well that sounds like something the uh, lady in the woods might be able to help us with. What was that? What was that? <laughs> okay. Um, I want to go and check on, check if we can get some hair off her, but he was sleeping in this alleyway last time I saw him. <clears throat> there he is. Can we use a knife to shave some cat hair? Or horse hair. That might hmm. be better. Horse hair would make fine bowstring. Better than cat hair. <laughs> she almost took my head off. Right. Let's try the rotten apple then. Hey girl. Would you like an apple? She is completely indifferent. Perhaps the apple is too spoiled for her liking. That's not mine to take. The horse has been provided with some drinking water. All right, well, how can we get the horse to behave itself? I'm not sure what that would achieve. Oh, I just want to cut the rotten bits off. Mm. Maybe if we talk to the apple seller and say it was rotten, maybe he'll give us a fresh one. sure they would be interested. Hmm. Maybe we could do a swap. I'm not sure what that would achieve. Well, you got a non-rotten apple. The produce is not mine to take. Right. Now oh, let's talk to Good him again. Day. How did you like your apple? I'm afraid it is rather rotten, sir. Hey up. That slander, that is. Don't you be going around telling folk I'm handing out rotten apples. I'm not sure they would be in. Alright, okay. Bit of a dead end that then. Um, okay, well, let's go to the woods then. Daddy, oh. I have something for you. I do hope you remember it. I've taken great care of it. I'll fetch it for you now, alright. Daddy, you must remember this, the day that started it all. It's the red urn you buried in the garden for me, my first ever excavation. Hmm, where should I put it? Right there. Perfect. It will catch the light from your lamp so nicely. There. I'm going to become a great barrow digger just like you. I hope the pot reminds you of those adventures we had together when I was a child, and how thankful I am for everything you've taught me. Now I must tell you about my visit to Pallinghurst. I found an arrowhead. Mm. It'd be funny if he was just pretending to be asleep. To avoid talking to them. All right. Good day. Yes. Do you have any fresh milk going, Spur? No, sorry. Not to worry. Do you know of any remedies for aching joints? You're too young to be suffering from this, surely. It's for someone else, Mr. Bryden. Yes, yes. I know just the poultice. Capital. May I have some? Well, I don't have the ingredients, I'm afraid. What do you need to make it? It's a simple blend made of natural elements. Elderflower and flirtwort. I can make the poultice for you if you bring me these things. Then it just needs to be applied directly to the joints. That should ease his burden. Thank you. Okay, what do those things look like? Where can I find some flirtwort? Flirtwort is not commonly found around Bewley. 
It's a perennial shrub that bears small white flowers. You might find some growing out on moors if you're lucky. Thank you. I think where the painter was. What about elderflower? Where can I find some elderflower? There used to be quite a few elder plants growing here in Hearn Wood, but they've long since gone. Nowadays, you might find the shrub growing within a hedgerow or a private garden. I see. What does elderflower look like? Elderflowers are small, white, and grow in clumps on the elder shrub. Elder shrubs can grow in all shapes and sizes. Just look out for the clumps of tiny white flowers. Okay. Farewell. Well, I think I know where the flirt walk might be. Oh, little fox. Mm. Taking the resin, haven't I? Is it just exits here now? Yeah. Yeah, in the old badger hole. Yeah, I think it might be this. This looks like it might be elderflower. I'll take some. Oh, I was kind of hoping that was flirt ward. Never mind. Okay, so she did say maybe out somewhere on the moors, so I guess we'll go do that. Excuse me, Miss Bateman. I'm in something of a hurry. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. Which work is that quote from? Romeo and Juliet. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Interesting. Or where he's off to. Something suspicious, maybe. Guess we'll head out this way. Oh, we're at Bridley's farm. Um, never mind then. We'll go towards um, Shoulders Place. has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Can I chisel that off? It's bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. But can we... chisel it off? Oh, interesting. That is not coming off. No. Can we go in? Mr. Shoulder told... I know, I was wondering if we could go in. I guess not. Not much here. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Into the inventory you go. Yeah. Okay. We got like a little journal or anything to do. Let's have a look. White flowers growing somewhere on the moor. What a peculiar name, the Devil's Toe. I can't quite see the resemblance myself. Don't go on the moor. Or is it stay off the moor? Keep off the moor, I think. I think it was the name of the last uh, number one video. How else can we get onto the moors? This goes up to Bridley's. Oh, no, 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 sorry, that's not where I want to go. There's always a uh, west out of town, maybe? Past the uh, Cyril's house, that way. Yeah, this. Well, there's an exit over there. Can we do this? Oh, that's just the woods. Go this way, then. No. 
Is there somewhere to the right of the ta the tavern? Fresh Scotch eggs. Oh, that sounds nice. Can I go this? No, not to the not to the alleyway. Not not to the no. Can we pick up the poo? I certainly don't wish to touch it. Fresh and steamy, delightful. Oh, I yeah. believe a horse to be the culprit. Fresh horse apples. I do anything with the trail. I shan't be dragging any of my possession. <laughs> it was not your possession. You borrowed it, remember? Um, put the poo in the horse I apple. I shan't be dragging the it. The rotten apple in the horse apples. Okay, well, what's here? Just the exit. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Nobody home. The window box is well out of reach. These flowers look pretty. Someone must take good care of them. The only flowers I can think of are the ones in the church. The window box is well out of reach. The window box. These flowers look. There's Is nothing she, else I wish. Okay, I was just going to say maybe she knows where it could be found. I'm just trying to talk with the cobbler still. Hmm. No one here. Henry Long's place. the black we can ask her maybe good day hello do you have any milk for me mum not yet miss Tompkins oh dear no sign of mr. Ambrose I'm afraid not I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk thank you ma'am but tell me if you I will all right maybe crazy nose good day hey up Thanks for your time. No. Hi. Speak to you later. Well, right, let's try the church. Those have seen better days. The flowers have long since. Fine. What about her? Good day to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. De Plancy. If you're looking for Father Roach, he won't be back until tomorrow. Where is Father Roach? You might have noticed the good father has a green thumb. He's gone to visit his friend in the countryside to purchase some seedlings for his tower garden. Where is Father Roach's tower garden? Why, on top of St. Edmund's, of course. He's got a lovely collection of cuttings hmm. up there. You'll have to ask him to show you. It does sound rather pleasant. It's a shame he's not around. Well, he does have a spare key for the tower door somewhere. Do you know where Father Roach keeps his spare key? No, that's his business. If I did know, I'd fetch it myself and take you up there. Not to worry. I do recall him saying he hid it outside somewhere. For safekeeping, like. Okay. Were it in the graveyard? Oh, I don't know. There is that unlocked this grave. Till he gets back, pet. Let's just let's just ask her about the rest I of the stuff. I found out my father visited Bewley some twenty-five years ago. William Bateman. Perhaps you remember him? Bateman. William Bateman. I remember a William Baldwin. He were a right miserable sod. My father was only in Bewley briefly, from what I understand. I'm trying to piece together what he was doing here. You'll have to ask him. I don't recall anyone of that name. My father took part in an excavation at Hobbs Barrow. Do you recall the excavation? 
I concern myself only with matters related to the church. I'm sorry I can't be more helpful. What do you make of these stones? They are not Christian. I'm certain of that. I agree. Much older, I feel. Older than Christianity? Oh, the youth of today. <laughs> these box pews are most unusual. I've never seen any quite so tall. We Beulie folk like our privacy. Many of the pews are owned by individual families. Some might accuse you of hiding secrets. Now, now, pet. I jest. At my age, it's hard to climb in and out of them. I'd rather stand. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? Hmm. Is that a village near Erdlaw? No, never mind. Do you have any fresh milk going spare? I don't, pet. Not to worry. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Right, let's go out. Um, I'll have a little look at that fresh grave that doesn't have a headstone. That could be could be the spare key. Got a trowel. Is there anything I can think of around here? Got a trowel. There may be a barrow dig. All right, all right. This appears to be a re. This appears to be. A yeah, so you got to look in there. William Paxton, modest and gentle of heart. Here lies Elizabeth Farnaby. Samuel Bryden, death is only a shadow across the path to heaven. Joseph Davis. John Purchase, dearly beloved husband of Florence. Forever in light, Anne Kemp. Joseph Davis. Um, the other thing I can think of is the memorial plaques. Maybe there's uh, one of those that is obviously loose or a... In memory of Peter Black. I'll just have a look at these. In memory of George Paxton. In memory of William Ager. In memory of Barnaby Tillett. In memory of Mabel Hurst. In memory of Percival Roach. Well, that one. I can't see how that will help. In memory. In memory. I'm not sure. Okay. In memory of Benjamin Garkham. In memory of Romeo Hegg. In memory of. In memory of Henry. I mean, the, the Romeo and Juliet one, possibly. Hmm. No, that won't work. In memory... In memory... Oh, that's this one. I think I can chip away at this plaster. There's a key behind mm -hmm. here. This has to be Father Roach's spare. Nice. Okay, well, let's get up to the roof. Capital. This looks like it. <clears throat> A small label on the pot reads Flirtwort. This is just what I need. Good, we got some. Okay, let's go back down. Right, so now we can get the medicine for... I should put the key back. All right. Get the medicine for the farmer. He can get the milk for us. We can take the milk to Lord Panswick. And we can ask his laborers to help on. us excavate the barrow. I still don't know how to get the, the horse to give us something. It's horse hair. Right, let's um, go to Mildred Walker. Good day. Yes. I think I have some flirtwort here. 
Show me. Aye, that's flirtwort, all right. Let me know when you found some elderflower, too. I have some elderflowers here. Show me. No, no, this is not elderflower. It's cowbane. An easy mistake to make. The two look very similar. Oh. It's safe to eat, as long as you're not a cow. Very toxic to cattle. Where can I find some elderflower? There used to be quite a few elder plants growing here, and nowadays you might find the shrub growing within a hedgerow or a private... I see. What does elderflower look like? Elderflowers are small. Elder shrubs can grow in... Farewell. Damn it. Hey. Okay. I thought we'd done it. I don't think they're down the badger hole. We could ask Arthur, maybe he knows something. Arthur, you won't believe it. The journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. Arthur? Hello? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to remember something. What is it? I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. Let's talk about it tonight at the plough. That's fine, Seems Arthur. a bit preoccupied we'll now, doesn't it? I hope you piece together your memories. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll have to keep looking. So that's Cowbane. The water is icy cold. Could I gather some? No, that won't achieve any. You don't know that. All right, hedgerows, private garden. I didn't know. I was looking for the flirt water anyway. I didn't see anything like that. I don't think anyone is hurt. We're all Cyril. Book it off! <laughs> ah, the unmistakable charm of old Cyril. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any here. Hello, Jane. Miss, watch me juggle. Very impressive. I can juggle even more apples. Let's give her a rotten one. I dare you to juggle an extra apple. Easy. Told you I could do it. Here's your apple back. I hope I'm I got a nice very one. Very impressed. The apple looks somewhat rotten. Right. Okay. <laughs> I got the same rotten one back. Hello, Jane. Miss. Right. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, fine. Okay. Well, what I'd hope was she might mix the apples up and give me a better one, but seems not. Very impressive. I can juggle. Good day. Freshly sell it would miss like No thank hmm. Hmm. Wonder if I might give the cow bane to the horse. Said it was only toxic for cows. M maybe it would be 
be okay. I don't wish to feed this to the horse. All right. <laughs> Can we go back to getting Herbert's hair? That I don't plan. wish to wake him up. I could certainly use the knife, but I'm going to have to gain her trust. Oh. I'd rather not go into. All right. I got a thought. Grumpy old Joe sugar cubes. Uh -huh. I prefer my tea hot and fresh. Right, well this should this should help with that. Here you go. Eat this. Good girl. Hopefully that's gained some trust between us. Right. Let's chop off your bit of your tail. I've managed to cut off a few lengthy strands. Right, so we need to put a waxy thing on them. We've got this resin that we collected earlier, so let's do that. There we are. This should make sufficient bowstring now. So let's use that with the bow. I've done it. The bowstring seems to hold on sufficiently. So now we've got to go and find that girl. She was. Uh, if we go to Shoulders Place, she's kind of. She always kind of hangs out on this moor area, doesn't she? There she is. Look what I have for you. is spinning. What happened? Hello? Where did she go? The girl left her fiddle behind. I'll take it with me in case I see her again. I want to understand what just happened. What a peculiar name. I can't... Alright, still no closer to Elderflower, but we did that, I suppose. <laughs> Not quite sure what it achieved. Oh, the bunny. Can we see any Elderflower? Hedgerow. I can't even think of hedgerows we may have seen. I don't This way, I suppose. We'll just end up at the Bridley Farm again. You could ask him, I suppose. Maybe he knows where there's some. Hello. Hmm, he's not answering. That's kind of a hedgerow. Hmm. Can we go across the field to the barrow? That weird stone. Finally, we shall excavate tomorrow. Though first, I need to find some workmen to assist me. Yeah. Um. Okay. Mm. 
What if we use the weird stones we've got with no, this stone? No, that won't achieve it. Alright. <laughs> Fine. I feel like I've been to most places now looking for this. I suppose we could try and go up the tower again. Well, I can't actually interact with that plaque anymore, so that maybe suggests that I'm done there. Unless I left this door unlocked. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah, maybe he's got some elderflower up here as well. There were other plants. Father Roach has amassed quite the collection. Wild garlic, fennel, corn mint. No elderflower. Not there, not the woods. Done. I've been here. We could walk out to the train station again, maybe. Not seeing anything to interact with on this screen, though. Don't remember anything here. My mother always told me. Hello. Hmm. Perhaps you'd be more interested. Freshly made, just one penny each. No. Mutton pies! Good day. Fresh set would miss that. No, th I can't think of anything. Go and ask Stanley. Maybe he knows. Or maybe, uh, maybe Leonard Nightman. Hello know. again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bearman. Not really. Thank you for your time. Aye, Miss Bateman. We will speak more. I can't think of anything else. Hmm. Hello there. Yes. Is that your horse? Aye. Thistlecrack is a... That's an unusual name for a horse. Aye. It was what she were called when I bought her. Glutton would be a better name. She likes a treat, but it feels wrong to change it. Thank you for your time. Make sure you watch my performance. I'll try. All right. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to probably wander around fairly aimlessly just trying to find this elderflower. So what I'll do, I'm going to pause this here. And when we come back, I'll have hopefully found the elderflower. Okay, welcome back. I think I've figured this out. It was quite easy to miss, but actually... These herbs, although she didn't say it the first time. When I clicked on it again, she says this. This looks like elderflower to me. So we can try and swap the cowbane with the elderflower. Mm. Oi! Keep your grubby hands off me produce. But not while she's Sorry. watching us. So we need a distraction, and I think the way to do that is with Jane here, who's gonna be juggling. So we've got the moldy apple. As we know, she'll juggle that no complaints. I went back and I picked up one of the worms that we were in the hole we uncovered. Um, we dug up her doll. And I think we can combine that with the... Found a new home within the holes of the rotten apple. So now we have this wormy apple. I think if we give this to her, I this might be the distraction we need. An extra apple. Easy. Yuck, a worm. Right, good. Okay, now we'll take the cowbane. Switch with the herbs. And we have elder flowers. I managed to swap them without her noticing. Good. We're done. Okay, so let's go to Mildred's cottage. And we'll give her this. Good day. I have the ingredients you asked for. Wonderful. Hand them over. There you go. 
tell Mr. Bryden to apply this poultice to the area in question. It works wonders. Thank you very much. All right, so let's fast travel over to Bryden's farm. And we'll give him the poultice. Yes? I've got a poultice for your joints, Mr. Bryden. It was prepared by Mildred Walker. Who? You may know her as Mother Mildred. Oh, thank you, lass. That Mildred knows what she's doing. I should have thought to see her myself. She said to apply it directly to where the pain is. It should work very swiftly. I'll give it a try. Oh, that did the trick, lass. I feel like a lad of twenty again. I suppose you'll be wanting me to milk old Eunice for your in return. If you don't mind, I'd appreciate it. A fair exchange? Stand well back, lass. Believe me, I'm not coming an inch closer. There you are, lass. Some fresh milk. Right, we're on our way now. Thank you very much, Mr. Bryden. He's probably hoping that's the last he'll see of us. Right, well, let's fast travel back to the marketplace. And we'll give. Can we, can I'll we, let the worm enjoy his new <laughs> home. <laughs> we'll leave that there then. Who's this guy? Good day. Hello there. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ralph. Not seen you around before. I'm just visiting. I'm looking for some help with an excavation tomorrow. Might you be interested? Sorry, miss. I've already got my own job. What brings you to the market today? I purchased a scotch egg for me tea. You want a bite? No, thank you. Enjoy your scotch egg. I will. Okay, so let's go and give the milk to the maid. Fresh scotch eggs! I've got a pail of fresh milk here for you, Miss Tompkins. You haven't. Here. Mum, you've saved my hide. Thank you. <sighs> Are you all right? I'm worried about Mr. Ambrose. Any road, I'm heading back to Panswick Manor now. Would you still like to meet his lordship? Very much so. Now, I can't guarantee you'll be home all right. He's a very busy man. I'll take my chances. Follow me, then. Come on over. It's not much further. He's got a crescent moon thing above his door. What time do you call this? Sorry, ma'am. Give it here, then. What the hell is this muck? Goat's milk, ma'am. You daft bit. Since when does his lordship take goat's milk with his tea? Oh, he will not be pleased. Get back to your sweeper before I clip you over the head. Sorry, ma'am. Friendly woman. Where is Lord Panswick? Sorry, ma'am. I can't talk. Miss Fenchurch is ever so mad at me. I've no time for frolicking with the flock. Some fine looking flowers. Can we take them? Some fine looking. All right. That is well out of my reach. Hmm. It's a symbol of some kind. A moon, perhaps? Hello there. Bugger off, you whelp. This is private land. Gonna have my bucket back. <laughs> we play her a song. I don't wish to give that. Um. 
I'm not sure they would. Not anything that would be of interest. I don't wish to get. Here on the side. I was wondering if it might be possible to speak with Lord Panswick. Are you deaf, girl? Don't make me fetch the guards. They're armed, you know. By Christ, you're like a dog with a bone. Do you want to get yourself shot? I can assure you the only things getting shot around here are the pheasant. And perhaps the odd grouse. <laughs> Greetings, my lady. Lord James Panswick. <laughs> At your disposal. I thought he was Lord Panswick when we first Your met him. Oh, Lord Panswick. As I live and breathe. You could have told me that before. What is life without mystery, Miss Bateman? A predictable stagger to the grave? I was imagining someone... Much older and far less handsome? Something like that. <laughs> See? I can read your mind, my dear. Now, may I ask, what brings you to my manor? I wanted to ask if I could borrow some of your labourers. Oh? For what purpose? I intend to excavate Hobbs Barrow tomorrow, and I'm in need of some assistance. An excavation? How very delightful. We're in the middle of our own works right this minute. Follow me, Miss Bateman. Mm -hmm. Come along. I promise I don't bite. <laughs> For generations... This chapel was a place of unique devotion. And this was until some of my more ungrateful ancestors forgot him and abandoned it. Why did they abandon it? Men of great wealth and power can grow so comfortable that they forget they still need the divine. The sacrifices required to maintain such a relationship were no longer being made. The chapel soon turned to rubble. And with time, even the villagers forgot him. Oh, I'm just His influence endured, but little hair standing up at the back of my neck. <laughs> few who lived on the very fringes of these moors. Believe it or not, my family's fortunes have dwindled ever since. I don't think that's a Christian Since I chapel. succeeded my father, it has become my life's work to restore this place of worship. With this sacred place rebuilt, he shall be venerated once more, and the name Panswick shall be uttered again across all of England. He guided the hands of my ancestors. Now it is time for him to guide us. Bewley is a godless place. Have you forgotten about St. Edmunds? Father Roach might disagree. <laughs> I shall bring him back to these lands, and this chapel shall be his seat once again. A new world. But it seems like you wish to bring back the past. From out of the old world shall come the new. A greater truth. But I digress. Horace, my dear fellow. Aye, your lordship. This fair lady here is in need of some assistance. Would you and your chaps be up for a spot of digging at Hobbs Barrow tomorrow? Hobbs Barrow? Aye, your lordship. Tis no bother. Good man. You're in luck, my dear. These are my finest. They're all yours. Thank you. I am grateful. On one condition. Yes? I've heard wonders about Mary de Plancy's Bakewell puddings. I'd rather like to try them for myself. Your Lordship, you're giving me the help of your men in exchange for cakes? Yes. But... Farewell, my beauty. Wait! Is his lordship joking about the Bakewell puddings? No, miss. His lordship is a man of folly. How ridiculous! He treats you all right if you do what he asks. They have some decent equipment here. It will be more than useful for the excavation. Please let us get on with our toil. If you do as his lordship requests, we'll help you tomorrow. Right, well, how am I going to get... How am I going to get a Blake Bakewell pudding? I don't have any money. Maybe she'll take musical instruments in exchange. She was in the church, wasn't she? So let's go there. That's not mine to interfere with. Fair enough. Good day to you, pet. Hello, Mrs. De Plancy. 
Do you still have some of your homemade Bakewell puddings, Mrs. Deplancy? Oh, you're too late, Pet. I've a few left, but they're set aside for someone else. Might you please be able to bake me some more? Sorry, I, I, I'm not in the mood for baking. Truth be told, my dear husband Albert passed away recently. My thoughts are all over the shop. I'm so sorry to hear that. Aye, he's in God's hands now. Were you married to Albert a long time? Aye, too many years to count. He was a cobbler here in Bewley. The oh. most dashing <laughs> cobbler in all of England, I used to tell him. <sighs> Love is precious. We won't be asking him about, uh, There's nought that can replace the, the all it leaves in your heart. I can relate to that in my own way. I wish you strength in this difficult time. Thank you. With God's blessing, I'll get by. May I ask who you have set aside the puddings for? Oh, uh, Father Roach. He won't be back until tomorrow. Won't they be off by then? Not at all. Besides, pet, as I told you, I'm not in the mood for all this baking chatter. Sorry, Mrs. Deplancy. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Can we steal her basket now? That's not mine. This must belong to Mrs. I don't wish to give. I. I'm a little bit at a impasse again. I'm going to get a. Get those cakes. Ooh. The simple wooden cross bears a small plaque on which is inscribed the name Albert de Plancy. Relative, are you? No, just looking. He with a cobbler. Who's going to mend me boots now? <laughs> hmm. Hello. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Now to say. Except don't be sniffing around his lordship's manor. You'll end up with a round of shot in you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Just mind your own business around here. Does this fresh grave belong to Mrs. De Plancy's late husband? Aye. Rather bare, isn't it? My job is to dig the graves, not decorate them. What can you tell me about the church? Aye, it's a church. Quite. Goodbye. Ta-ra. All right, not very illuminating. The simple wooden cross bear. I'm assuming she's still not willing to dig him up. <laughs> I may be a barrow dig. Can we some fine-looking flowers? Can we take the flowers? I could just pick this up. Do it then. Some fine, some fine. Oh, let's talk to the old bag now that the Lord's given me permission Good to day. be here. Oh, another strumpet looking to find her way into his lordship's bedchambers, I see. I'm nothing of the sort. Ha! I've seen plenty of your sort before. Hmm. <laughs> Is there anything over here? Not really. Thank you for bringing me here, Miss Tompkins. You're welcome, ma'am. Hmm. That's Mildred. Then we're just going to go around and just. Else to ask for the time yeah, being. I was going to say we're going to go around and just talk to everyone one more time, I think, and see if any clues are forthcoming. Where should we go I down shan't the hole be again? visiting the badges again. <laughs> Fair enough. Arthur's gone. Maybe we'll go to the pub. Talk to 
Leonard. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Behrman. Mr. Bryden has given me permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Marvelous. I'm sorry you've had to sort all this out in my absence. When do we start? Tomorrow, I hope. But first, I need to recruit some locals to assist with the dig. It's too much work for me to do on my own. I see. Bewley has its fair share of strapping young lads. You'll find assistance, Miss Bateman. What else can you tell me about this Saxnot? Try not to worry yourself too much with these old stories. Leave those to the locals, Miss Bateman. Have others spoken of goblins appearing in their dreams? A dream is a dream, that is all. They merely make for good stories. I know, I know. But to answer your question, no, not to my knowledge. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sure the locals have filled you in already, lass. You cut quite the mysterious figure. Most had little to say. It's true. I do tend to keep my head down. When one gets to my age, one grows very comfortable in one's home. I like the isolation of the moor. I wouldn't change it for anything. I take it you don't get many visitors? Oh, no. Nobody bothers me. That's the perk of living so far out, huh? Just me and me hands. I used to come into Bewley more often, back before me health went to buggery. What do you think of Bewley? Whilst one could consider the villagers to be rather unenlightened, this place has its charm. The market's in town today. You can see that folk want for now, dear. I know where I can find a scotch egg, that's for certain. Do treat yourself to one. You'll not taste better. Is there anything else I should know about Hobbs Barrow, Mr. Shoulder? No, lass. I'm certain we will know a lot more about it by this time tomorrow. I hope so. What else can you tell me about the previous excavation? I think I covered it earlier, Miss Bateman. As you yourself said, it were a time of superstitious hysteria. What was it like, living in that period of hysteria? I kept to myself. It didn't really affect me. My hens stayed healthy and their eggs kept me well fed. If one can keep a level head in such situations, one can get by. Indeed. Is there anything else I should be aware of before my own excavation? No other ghouls I should be worried about? Ah, you know the answer to that. The corruption in that soil were all in the minds of men. What do you make of Lord Panswick? His lordship is an important man in Bewley, as I'm sure you have gathered. His family has commanded much respect here for many generations. Do you respect him as a leader? I do. He wants the best for the village. Without his influence, the railway line would have never come through here. Does he want more visitors? Well, Cyril doesn't like Aye, him. I believe so. He has great ambitions for Bewley and wants to share them with the world. What do you make of Mildred Walker? Who? I believe she's also known as Mother Mildred. Oh, we used to get about when we were children. Our paths have not crossed in a long while. What do you think of Charles Bryden? He is a decent man. It must have been hard for him after that terrible business with his brother. Without a doubt. I must say I had assumed you had at least spoken to him about my visit. Sorry, lass. I had no intention of giving you the runaround. Again, I can only apologize. If you don't mind me asking, what is the nature of your ongoing illness? Oh, just the ravages of age. Getting off this bench will be a small battle in itself. Something you won't need to worry about for many a year, Miss Bateman. Growing old is a blessing and a curse. And what of your recent fever? An ordeal, it were. So much tossing and turning. But I'm right as rain now, especially after a mug of ale. Don't worry about me. What are Lord Panswick's plans for Bewley? He's rebuilding an old chapel on his estate. He seeks to bring God back to these lands. But what of St Edmunds? I think Father Roach might argue God has never left. Indeed. Let's leave such arguments to them, shall we? Thank you for your time. 
Hi, Miss Bateman. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. We need cakes. I can't think of any. All right. Mm, not much else going on here. I don't feel like I've really got any leads at this point. Try and get the cobblers again. Hmm. No one here. I really don't want a mutton pie. Day. Hey up. I met a girl at the Devil's Toe. She gave me this broken fiddle bow. Ha. Well, you've experienced the local folklore firsthand, then, lass. Hmm. What do you make of these stones? Don't look like out to me. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Oh, is there anything in my inventory I can give her? Things. See if anything will work. I don't wish to give that. I don't wish to give. A lantern's not going to do anything. I don't wish. To I don't wish. To oh. This is my father's journal. What do you make of these sketches? Queer things, aren't they? Bordering on blasphemy, if you ask me. That book shouldn't be in a place of worship like this. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure they would be. be threatened with a knife. I'm not sure they would. A stone fiddle. I don't wish. To. That's not mine. Do you want the cakes? How else are we going to get the cakes? Good day to you. Hello, Mrs. I saw your late husband's grave, Mrs. De Plancy. I am very sorry for your loss. Thank you, pet. I'm ashamed to say I couldn't afford now more than a simple wooden cross. You were a colourful man, our Albert. He deserves better. He loved his flower beds. He's only been gone a fortnight, and already his plants have gone to rot. May the Lord forgive me. Plants are difficult to maintain. I'm sure Albert would understand. His precious hippie astrum were the first to go. I would have loved to lay one on his grave. What does a hippie astrum flower look like? Oh, beautiful things they are. Tall stems topped with large okay. red flowers. Hard to grow in this climate. They were his pride and joy. The remarkable thing is there's no scent to him. That's why he loved him so much. <laughs> you see, he hated anything that smelled sickly sweet. If the astral were just perfect. Let me know if you come across one, won't you? Of course, Mrs. De Plancy. Thanks for your time. Right, well, I know where to find that then. I was trying to pick them before, but obviously we didn't have a good reason to do it then. So let's whiz back over there and do it now. These match the description of the flowers Mrs. De Plancy mentioned. There's no scent. You get away from my hippie astrum. Ah, apologies. Move! Hey, well, up. that confirms it. Okay, sorry, I did pause the recording of my uh, children walking around the house shouting. Um... But basically what I did is I talked to Miss Tompkins to see if she could help us get this flower. Um, but she's worried about the milkman. They were going to run away Hello. together. So I'll just carry I'm on this sorry, conversation. Sorry, Miss Tompkins. I still haven't seen him. Do you think he's abandoned me? I'm sure that's not the case. He must have been delayed He's run off with the postman and the priest. Could you try to find him for me, ma'am? Uh... Oh, please, ma'am. I'd do anything for you if you found my love. I can try. Oh, thank you. 
You're ever so kind, ma'am. What does Mr. Ambrose look like? He's got brown hair. I'm afraid I'll need a bit more to go on. Sorry, ma'am. I'm too upset. Please find him, won't you? Hey, stop your nattering and get back to your sweeping. Sorry, Miss Fenchurch. Right, okay. There's a lot to go on, but let's start off at the marketplace and we'll ask people about him. Good day. Hello there. Do you know Mr. Ambrose, the milkman? I do, yes. Have you any idea where he might be? He is usually here by now. So I heard. He normally arrives via the road to the east of Bewley. Thank you. Enjoy your scotch egg. I will. All right, well, let's follow that lead. Don't go up the alleyway. All right, she's going up the alleyway. Let's go this way. I'm going to pass out again. There we are. Your shells are looking much more interesting now. I pestered Mother for years to let me bring some of your treasures here. I think she's worried that I'd want to follow in your path. She has hidden most of your discoveries away. I had to beg her to bring me to visit you, you know. I shouldn't worry you with all that. Do you know that I have a story for each of these pots? Well, I don't know if they're all true, but they are my memories. Even though I was so young, I still remember our adventures together. Would you like me to share my memories of them? Well, I'm going to, whether you like it or not. <laughs> We talked about this one already. The red urn you buried in the garden for me. It seems like such a long time ago. You were incredibly excited about this one. I hadn't gone on an expedition with you yet. You were so happy about it, showing it to Mother and I. You didn't stop talking about it for hours. I thought, how can Daddy be so excited over some old broken pottery? But it wasn't long until I understood. Hmm, I think you brought this one back from a trip abroad. I would have loved to go with you, but Mother didn't want me to. I remember you being so proud of it. It looks ancient. This is from the first dig I remember you taking me on. The excavation of West Kennet Long Barrow. I found it wedged behind a stone as you ate your sandwich. You said, now there's a tiny urn for a tiny girl. Mother was so angry when you brought this one home, wasn't she? William, that simply will not do. It's taking up all the space on the mantelpiece. Once you moved it to your study, I remember creeping in to take a peek at it. We found this one together in that mucky old barrow near Avebury. I think it was the second time you'd taken me on a dig with you. I remember you bringing it up to your face to look inside and shrieking in horror. There's a bloody rat in there, you screamed. <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot. While I was searching for your pots in the shed, I found one of your manuscripts. I thought Mother had burnt all your notebooks, but she missed one. It was an account of barrows across the east of England. I managed to read it all before Mother took it away. Daddy, it was fascinating. I've decided that is what I want to do with my life. I'm going to travel the country, excavating and documenting my own finds. Well, as soon as I'm old enough to escape mother, that is. When you're feeling better, we can go out on expeditions together again, just like we used to. I promise you'll get better, Daddy. I'll do whatever it takes to make it so. Right, well, let's keep heading east, I suppose. There's something ahead on the road. Oh, I see it. My God! Mr. Hmm. Ambrose! I'm going to help you. So the cat licking up all the spilt milk. is not salvageable. Right, well, I think we've got a we've got a knife, haven't we? So let's um try and cut Please him free. Hold still, I, I'm going to cut you free. 
He had been so tightly bound that I could barely cut through without hurting him further. His mouth was stuffed full of flowers of a most peculiar scent. I was dismayed at such savagery and wondered if the feral folk Father Roach had mentioned were responsible for this abhorrent act. After some considerable effort, I managed to cut him free. Are you all right? I... who were lost in visions of... of hell. Of hell itself. The devil. I saw the devil. Who did this to you? I... don't remember. Oh, the terrible sights I saw. I won't forget them till my last breath. Are you Mr. Ambrose? I... Yes. Yes. Edward Ambrose. You were to meet Miss Tompkins today. Oh, my love. Oh, my darling love. Let me take you to her. Here, take my hand. As we made the arduous trek to Panswick Manor, I probed Mr. Ambrose on who had done this to him. He insisted that he didn't remember anything, except for his nightmarish visions. My love! Eddie! Jesus, what happened to you? Were you in a fight? Now, fret not, my love. I thought you'd abandoned me. Never. Thank your friend here for helping me out of a bind. Oh, Eddie! Let's get out of here, my darling. Hang on. You thieving bint! How have you got for garters? Oh, stick it where the sun don't shine, you bitter <laughs> old sow! Uh, I, the cheek! <laughs> Here you are, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Tompkins. No, thank you for finding my poor Eddie. Oi, thank you, lass. Let's go, Eddie. I'm never setting foot on this godforsaken estate again. Good luck, you two. All right, so there's a few things to do here to tidy up, isn't there? So we need to go back to the church. Give the flowers to Mrs. whatever her face is. Plant to Plancy, that's it. I have something for you. You found them? Oh, you dear child. Let's take them straight to Albert. You'll come with me, won't you? Of course, Mrs. De Plancy. Now all I want are your cakes. You know, the things I miss most about him are the things that used to annoy me. The click of his jaw as he chewed his sandwiches, leaving his tools all around the house. The way he'd never back down from an argument. He's just quiet at home now. Silence. The funny thing is, that's what he always craved. Peace and quiet. He were a good man, our Albert. Sounds like he was. I'm so sorry. Do you fear death, pet? I do. But it's best not to dwell on such thoughts. Life is for living, not for worrying about what comes after. I fear it, but my faith keeps me going. I know I'll meet him again, in heaven. Take that thought forward, Mrs. De Plancy. Remember it. One day, you will be reunited. Thank you. Oh, those flowers look beautiful. They do. Albert will be smiling down on us. Pet, I left my basket inside the church. You'll find some big well puddings in there. You can have them. Oh, you... I insist. You've brought an ounce of happiness into my day, dear. It's only just that I return some. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. To be truthful with you, I was saving him for myself. I shouldn't be so selfish. Lord forgive me. You're nothing of the sort. 
I'll stay here with Albert a bit longer. You go back to your dear pit. Lord be with you. And you, Mrs. De Plancy. Right. The cakes are ours. Here they are. Right. Uh, I guess we have to leave the church first. We're going to zip back over to Plankswick Manor. Sorry, Panswick Manor. The vision returns. I come bearing gifts. Freshly baked gifts? Yes. Three of Mrs. De Plancy's famous Bakewell puddings. Ho, 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 ho. You are an amusing creature, Thomasina. What do you mean? You must think me a scoundrel of the highest order for asking you to undertake such folly. Of course I would have lent you my men either way. I merely desired an excuse to share a cake with you. Lord Panswick. I take no pleasure in watching you scurry about Bewley to fulfill my every whim. Or do I? I do not find this amusing in the slightest. You have no idea what I had to go through to get these for you. Oh, I do, I do. And that's what I admire about you. Tenacity. Even in the face of something you know to be absurd, you don't give up, do you? Never. Though in this case, I ought to have. <laughs> now then, will you share one of these tempting confections with me? Every fibre of my being screams no, but I'm curious to see what'll happen if I say yes. Why not? Splendid! I'm glad the rain doesn't put you off. You like to live a little dangerously, don't you, Thomasina? Let us stroll to the back. That sounds nice. And the pouring rain. We walked side by side down to the back, his hand occasionally brushing my own. Despite Lord Panswick's entertaining company, I had an overwhelming feeling that time was being wasted. We ate those cakes down by the beck, and as he attempted the most charming lines he could muster upon me, I only had one thing on my mind. Father, could he be saved from his suffering? Was the answer to be found within Hobbs Barrow? I ached to find out. I didn't even notice the taste of those famous puddings. Seemingly disheartened by my lack of enthusiasm, Lord Panswick soon marched me back toward the ruined chapel. Chaps, listen up. You're to assist Miss Bateman's excavation tomorrow. What time, Miss Bateman? Early morning, if you don't mind. We'll be there whenever you need us, Miss. On the Bryden estate, if I'm not mistaken? We'll be there. Take your tools with you. Miss Bateman will need every assistance we can provide her with. It's no bother. Splendid. Thank you, lads. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll see you later, my dear. Thank you, Lord Panswick. We're finishing up here, miss. See you tomorrow morning, all right? Certainly. I appreciate your help. Well, that's a relief to have my crew assembled for tomorrow. It's getting dark and cold. Time to head back to the plough and furrow. Why don't we go straight there? It's all misty again. Evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. Your Lordship. Stanley, my good man. To what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Your Lordship? I've come to wish Miss Bateman good fortune for her grand excavation tomorrow. I'm really rather curious as to what she might turn up. As am I, Your Lordship. An exciting time for Bewley. Wouldn't you agree, Stanley? Oh, yes, Your Lordship. Very, very exciting. My dear, please. Allow me the pleasure of buying you a drink. A welcome antidote to the wind's bite, wouldn't you say, Stanley? Yes, indeed, your lordship. Mm, why not? Why not? Splendid. 
You heard the fair lady. She hasn't had a requisite ten pints yet today, so may as well make it up. There you are. Thank you. Everyone, raise your glasses to Miss Bateman. May she conquer Hobbs Barrow and find all that she desires. Hip hip! Hooray! Hooray! You don't wish to join me in a beverage? Oh, you go ahead, my dear. Alcohol does not sit well with my constitution. Thank you, your lordship. I needed that. I aim to provide you with whatever your heart desires. I've reminded my chaps there to meet you at Hobbs Barrow in the morning. Thank you again, Lord Panswick. Till we meet again, fête des beaux rêves. Mr. Shoulder? Your Lordship? There's something going on, isn't there? Hmm. I'll speak to Leonard. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bearman. I've recruited the help of some local labourers to help with the excavation. Marvellous. When do we start? Tomorrow morning, first thing. Wonderful. Can I count on your assistance? Of course. I'll meet you here at the Plough and Furrow. Thank you for your time. Aye, Miss Bateman. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. You've changed your tunes, Stanley. An exciting time for Bewley. I thought you didn't want me to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Well, uh, I... Uh, what can I get you? I'm fine for now, thank you. I can't think of anything else to... Thought he was going to play a song. Oh, Arthur's back. So Cyril. I'll leave those two to... The I'll chat with Cyril first. Probably going to be a shorter Cyril. conversation. You're still here. Leave me be, lass. Yep. So, uh, I've seen a... Arthur? I've remembered something. What is it, Arthur? Not here. Meet me outside. In the alley. He's stinking drunk, but let's hear what he has to say. Shall I take I the don't shortcut? Need to use the all right, all right. What is it? First of all, I must apologize to you. That night we met, when I vanished. Yes? Well, there were a man in the loo. <laughs> A hooded man. He threatened me with a beating if I told you anything about what I saw. Oh, Arthur, that's terrible. What did you see? That's the thing. I hadn't the foggiest idea what he were on about. It was a drink, you see. I'm an embarrassment, Thomasina. No, you're not, Arthur. Here's what I need to tell you. I've remembered what he were on about. Oh? I, standing in the woods today, I knew there was something. I waited. I concentrated. And it finally came back to me. Please, you're keeping me in some serious suspense here. All right, all right. It were a couple of days before I met you. Hmm. Intriguing. Hurry now, Leonard. I'm not as quick as I used to be. This leg is getting worse by the day. Yes, yes. I'm constantly made aware of your failing health. Do not fear. You said he has promised you the reward of your return strength. Aye, and it can't come soon enough. Are you sure that it must be her blood? Aye, she's family. And she gets here in two days? Aye. We must bring her to the site as soon as she arrives. No, no, no. Your lordship, with all due respect, we've been through this. We need to ease her into the idea. She would laugh in our faces if we just asked for it. Who said we would ask? He told me that she needs to give it willingly. This little scheme of yours better work, Leonard. It will, your lordship. We've got the perfect bit. <gasps> Wait. Who goes there? 
Did you hear something? Hmm. Ah, a moonlight tryst. After something, are you, Mr. Tillett? Your lordship, let me... Save your words, you drunken wretch. Off you go, skedaddle. Don't make me ask twice. I do wish you wouldn't spend so much time with that fool. It's beneath a woman of your standard. It's sad, really. That dog you're in they serve here has rather pickled the man's brain. You're being most unfair to him. Mr. Tillett is a nice man. Oh, come now, come now. I shall bid thee adieu once more, for I do not wish for this to come between us. All the very best wishes for your excavation tomorrow, my dear. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> well, we knew there was something up, didn't we? And that's kind of confirmed it. Might be enough of that. Let's escape. Another spooky night at the uh, plough and furrow. Does it not? It does. Good. Now listen. I can help him again. We can help him together. How? All those years ago, your father entered this barrow with the goal of binding me within it. All because the people of Beulah had gotten it into their heads that sacks not were cause of their plight. I tell you, Thomasina, I were not. Your father botched his incantation, leaving me in this weakened state, stuck in this limbo. As for him, well, you know how he ended up. This... this doesn't sound right. Incantations. My father was... is... a man of... You don't know your father, Thomasina. How old were you? A child of not even five, six years? You need to enter this barrow and undo what your father did. The spell must be undone. Then not only will I regain my strength, but your father will too. But how do I... Blood. The truest symbol of life and death. It's the life which flows within you. But it's also death once it escapes. I don't understand. Worry not how you'll undo what's been done. When the time comes, you'll know exactly what to do. Time is short. Your father and I grow weaker by the hour. Go. Save your father. Hmm. Intriguing stuff. I must undo what has been done. Father, I'm coming. Right, yeah. and But we're going to leave it there for now. I think that's probably a good place to leave it. I see Herbert's sleeping in our room. Didn't need to shave him in the end. Probably for the best. Um, but yeah, no intriguing stuff. And today's the day it sounds like we're going to be excavating the barrow and maybe 
getting a bit more to the heart of this mystery as to what actually what is actually going on uh, but thanks very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this if you did then please do hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel as well that'd be fantastic and i'll see you again i hope for the uh, next part of the excavation of hobbs barrow bye for now